the inky path. Pen is mightier than the sword. However, not all pens are equal. The ink pen, also known as fountain pen, is undoubtedly the mightiest. Social media has a funny way of taking you down the memory lane. Just yesterday, someone posted an image of an old camel ink bottle. Nostalgia ran free, not unlike the beautiful blue fluid that once flowed through the nibs of our pens. Most schools allowed the use of pens from fourth standard. Until third, we only used pencils. It was a huge deal for us, for it signified graduation of sorts from elementary to middle school. During the summer break between third and fourth, most of us would develop the urge to start keeping a diary. That it was merely an excuse to obtain the highly desired fountain pen early on was an open secret. Hours would be spent copiously practicing writing styles, pen holding grips, and so on. Handwriting, especially cursive, had a very important place, not only in our minds and the society, but also for good marks, and of course, the free pass to miss class. Handwriting competitions were conducted yearly, and the winners landed the much coveted task of writing the date, word of the day, thought of the day, and the subject on the blackboard in class. It was akin to holding celebrity status. Events like school festivals and the arrival of important guests were open ticket to these celebrities to be outside the class, busy decorating the main blackboard at the entrance of the school. While we, we would be sitting in class, listening to the instructions of the teacher. Now, who doesn't want a good excuse to stay out of class and still be the teacher's pet? The summer of third to fourth saw heads buried in notebooks, hands working hard to create a signature handwriting style that could be managed and maintained all year round. Some alphabets like A, I, O and Z received extra attention because of how easy they were to customize and with some good luck and hard work, they looked spectacular. Bags received extra special treatment on the first day of school. And why wouldn't they? Bags, these bags, they contained our treasure, the pen box, which in turn held our precious ink pens. Most of us received older pens from our parents for back then and even now fountain pens cost a lot. Parents gave hand-me-down pens with the carrot of buying a new one if we managed to not lose the pen in a month or if our scores in the first test were good. Then there were some like me who, re who received a hand-me-down pen that was in a league of its own. My father, my Baba, he has always had a love for elite pens. His collection, at least back then, was limited but classy. I was one of the few people in class who had actually wanted a hand-me-down pen. A special day it was when he handed me not one but two fountain pens. One, the fairly common and sturdy pilot which was supposed to be in my pencil box or now the pen box. And the second <gasps> was a true as gold Parker. Please note this was the early 90s in India when brands were few and imported brands were considered luxury. I was being interested with Baba's Parker pen. The moment where the pen exchanged hands would have been flaunt worthy 
in today's times of social media. I would have asked my mother, my Ai, to click a few thousand pictures of this Kodak moment and share them for an entire year. So precious was it. A pen is only as effective as the ink within. Back then, the only brand of ink commonly available was Camel ink. I still remember the day I first went shopping for my very own bottle of ink. For weeks after that, the glass bottle with the blue fluid inside it held a place of pride on my study table. The two pens carefully arranged beside it, a syringe lying crisscross. I wish I'd had the forethought to at least click some pictures, especially in the mornings when the rays of sun streamed into my room, casting a halo-like glow on my ink, pen, syringe arrangement. Blue ink was more common, even though black ink was also available. As an experiment, Baba and I once tried using black ink in another fountain pen of his and quickly realized that it made the pen feel different. Something in the dye of the black ink altered the flow through the nib and every few words or so, we would have to keep tapping on the pen to get the black ink flowing. Another time, I wondered why my teachers had not converted to ink pens. My question roused the scientist and Baba, who promptly got some red ink. We tried it on the old pen and realized that red ink also had the same run, the same flow as the black ink. I know it would have been easier to simply pose this question to my grandmother, my Aji, who was a teacher. But that would have been a straight approach. Baba and I, we are partners in crime as far as taking a harder approach is concerned, even if we don't need to. Why? Because it's more fun. Now this was back then, in the 90s, and I am sure the dyes and pigments have changed now. The black and red made for amazing quill inks. And I remember spending hours experimenting with a few feathers and these two inks, creating my very own versions of art. The two colors sparkled on plain white paper as well as on the slightly yellowish vintage looking papers. Unfortunately, I did not save these attempts or I might have been a renowned artist by now. I digress back to the inks. This left us with one last color. This time I took the lead and got a bottle of green ink. Soon we realized that green and blue inks had a smooth flow. My diary that year contained words in green ink while blue was used for schoolwork. If someone forgot their pen at home, they would have to either borrow a ballpoint pen or make do with a pencil. No one, no one loaned their fountain pens, for it was believed that fountain pens took on the character and handwriting of the person who owns it. A pen used by someone else, even to write a few words, would suddenly develop a different feel and your handwriting would be affected for a few lines until the pen adapted itself to your style and grip again. I remember urging the handwriting celebrity in my class to use my pen for a while, for it meant my own handwriting would be phenomenal for the better part of the day. Usually, the ink ran out after a few pages and we refilled our pens during lunch break. Oh, what a messy affair it was with inexpert, hurried hands inserting the syringe into the bottle, pulling the piston to draw in the ink, then holding the needle over the pen's tube and pushing the plunger to fill it. More times than I can remember, someone or the other would topple the bottle sending rivulets of blue ink 
over the classroom floor. The hand-me-down pen I used had a cartridge fitting, which meant all I needed to do if my ink ran out was to change the cartridge. I usually carried a couple of spare cartridges in my pen box. Empty cartridges were taken back home where I had the leisure to fill them up using syringe and ink bottle without the rush of the school bell ringing to signal the end of recess. Most of us mastered the art of refilling ink in pens by sixth standard and after that blue colored classroom floors became a thing of the past as far as we were concerned barring an occasional accident or two. As time progressed so did technology and by the time the new millennium rolled in fountain pens were fading into history to be replaced by ballpoint pens which were lightweight, no miss and could go on for days without refills. So convenient. But even in present times, important documents and valuable parchments are signed on with fountain pens. Fountain pens. Timeless elegance and class. If you enjoyed listening to this story, please do hit the like button on my Facebook page Short Stories by Shweta and you can also visit my website on shwetagode.com S-H-W-E-T-A-G-O-D-E dot -E com Keep reading, keep listening, keep writing. Have a good day. Bye-bye.